Let's go to Karen from Columbia, Missouri. She listens on KMFC. Hi there. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for taking my call. Well, certainly. How are you doing today? Well, not so well. Um, I have done well for years. I'm 74 years old. Well, Um, great. We've met you before, my husband and I, at at a couple of different events, and we went on the first cruise you and the fellas took. Oh, wow. We've listened since Men with Meyer Day. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, we're real fans. You're a wonderful bunch, and you've helped us so much, and we're also New Life Club supporters. Thank you for that. Thank you, well, Karen. Thank you. Well, you're so, welcome. So tell us what's not uh, not going so well right oh, now. Oh, my goodness. I have been... I, I'm wanting to know how to get rid of sometimes crippling anxiety. Um, it started about th- almost three weeks ago, and uh, it's much worse at night. I don't sleep well. Uh, I used to sleep well very much, but yeah. it's, I'm only getting about four or five hours sleep a night. And All I right. can get up and meditate on scripture. I've I've looked at Paul Meyer's book, the um, and Minrith's book. The we've had it for years. The introduction to the psychology of counseling, and there was a section in there about anxiety and different scriptures yeah. to meditate on and different things to do, and I've been doing a lot of that. Karen, um, Karen, I was but, I, I was tempted to say that if Frank and Paul's book won't put you to sleep, it must be severe anxiety. But I, oh, yes! I, I did, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. we got to ask the question. Three weeks ago, this started, so a few weeks before that or a week before that, was there something that changed or something that developed in your life that you could point to? You know, I can't come up with anything. My husband is 80. He turned 80 in July, and we've had a very happy marriage. Uh, We're in the midst of fighting what we think are bed bugs right now, and that really upset me. And then I I seem to morph into this morbid fear of losing him. I know at 80 he's going to be dying in the not-too-distant future. Uh, I I hate to be so morbid. Well, we've got something here to work with, don't we? Yes, and I've also, I'm I'm frightened of uh, handling things myself here at the house. Our our son is uh, four and a half hours away. We're on good terms with him and his wife. Uh, my first reaction was, oh, we need to move up there. Um, um, our daughter married an Englishman and lives overseas, so uh, we're close to them, see them a couple times. So, Karen, Karen what, what I'm hearing here is that either separation physically from your son or uh, separation potentially from your husband uh, through death. And right. then, and then the realities of the closeness of that, him turning 80, you know, decadal birthdays or birthdays on your decades uh, are really hard for decadal? all of Decadal? Yeah. Are all hard. I just made that word I've up. I've never heard uh, of Well, I oh, made it up because okay. it, it fits. It's a good one. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it, they're really hard. Th- they're sobering and they bring a reality to our lives. And so really what you're, you're feeling it, potentially here is you're feeling a tremendous sense of an overwhelming uh, dose of harsh reality mm-hmm. as well as a weakening on your part. Uh, I had a major heart surgery four years ago, and I couldn't yeah. even unscrew the childproof tops on the 25 medications I walked home with. Yeah. And, and I felt for the first time in my life a sense of vulnerability that I'd never felt before. And and when you're saying I don't want to try things or I feel uh, I, I I feel hesitant to reach out and manage things or handle things, right. it just makes so much sense. Okay, so Karen, yeah, you, you, you want- know, uh, may I tell you, this has happened to me uh, not over this issue, but uh, three other times in my life when I went to my first teaching job and. Uh, and each of the three times, I did not stay in the situation. Okay. I left. Okay, so your anxiety life. caused you to um, uh, really eject and jump out of the plane, didn't it? It, it did, okay. yes. And I don't want to eject now. Uh, I, and, I get that. Because uh, we've been happily, we are happily married. Oh, well, that's, but, part of, that's part of the problem. You're going to be losing something that is of value to you, and that oh, makes yeah. a lot of sense. Okay, so what do we do about it? Steve John? Yeah, right. Yeah, Karen, I got some suggestions for you. Okay. 
Um, anxiety problems are fundamentally about control. Okay. So when I feel like there's a situation in my life that's something painful or scary and I can't control it, uh, my brain and my adrenal glands and everything go into anxiety because I don't feel, I think there's a situation beyond me that I can't make choices about. So that's the right. fundamental thing that anxiety does. Okay. You follow me? I'm sure that's where I am. Sure. So God's got solutions for those kinds of things. And I want to give you a couple of skill sets to start working on that might help. These these tend to be how God, you know, helps people who are too scared. All righty? Okay. Um, one of those is confession. When you go to other people and you say, I'm not going to be the happy person today. I'm not going to cheer you up today. I'm not going to be Karen who's, got, who's just fine. I need to tell you how scared I am about this situation. Okay. Are, you, are you a good confessor, Karen, or is it hard for you no. to? No. No, I, I try to make everybody else. I kind of I wondered yeah. about that. So I'm going to give you a different skill set that you're going to have to do. Okay. I can tell you're excited about it already. Just yeah. You can't. <laughs> Cheerleaders and encouragers hate to hear this, but it will really it, it it'll cure what ails you. All right, okay. learn to confess when you feel negative things that scare you and bother you. You've got to bring them in relationships. So you, I assume that you probably have a lot of relational equity, a lot of people that love you, and probably actually caring a lot of people who would feel privileged and honored to listen to Karen's life because you listen to everybody else's life. So 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 draw on your relational equity. Okay. All right. The, the second thing is to determine what things that you do have choices over and what things to give to God and say, I can't do this. You know, First Peter tells us in, in, in chapter 5, verse 7, it says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Right. And, and the, the word there in the Greek for cast means like an like a MLB pitcher. You throw it hard and you say, God, I, don't, I love my husband so much and I can't control how many more days and years we've got left. I'm giving that to you. But I can control the quality of my life with him, the trips we go on, the friends we're at, the great talks we have. And it really helps to have anxiety clarify what I can control and can't. So learn to be a confessor and clarify control. Okay. Okay. And you know, another thing I'm scared of is uh, having to, I mean, one of us getting down and really ill, as has happened to so many of our friends, and there, there's no family around here. Well, now, now that, that's, see, you're saying out loud what you're afraid of, and then that can lead to you accepting the fact that you can't change that. You can develop a plan. You can say, okay, we're either going to do this, or we're going to have these people come in, or whatever. Be sure your plan's in place. But other than that, you're having to, to move into that acceptance place right out of the serenity prayer, the wisdom to know the difference between what I can change and what I cannot. Well, Karen, I hope that that's helpful to you, and uh, let me send you uh, a copy of John's book. Um, what, what would be a good... You know what would be good would be Best Friends Forever All right. because it's about a deeper relationship. Well, it sounds like that they are Best Friends Forever, so we'll send that out to them, and I hope that'll be a blessing to you um man. you know another thing that can occur here steve and john is at, at certain times of our lives we get overwhelmed and we can become depressed we, and that depression can be an anxious depression and sometimes an antidepressant can be the perfect solution mm -hmm. as well along with the things we've just said yeah. accepting reality making choices confession uh, et cetera, et cetera. So. As, as long as we do those first you know so many people go straight mm -hmm. to the prozac mm -hmm. and they never get healthy and holy right so you do the other stuff we're talking about and if it doesn't still work that means the neurons are screaming we need some help medically then you go to that right